Hey, what's up, you guys? I've been wanting to do this video for a really long time. So I'm going to talk about networking. And I know this is a conversation that comes up a lot and it seems like a buzzword, but networking is probably the most important thing that you will ever master in your life. All right. So what people don't realize, and I see this a lot, is they will come up to you and they'll be like, hey, I need this, 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 and this, right? When you've done that, have you ever seen anything that you actually need get done without having a relationship with that person? Not me. So I'm gonna talk about a couple of examples, real life examples, like you guys know me, I don't like to talk about things I've never experienced. So I'm gonna talk about some real life examples and how I got my network to be literally the top 1%. Like, I don't need to go out and meet anybody else because I know everybody I actually need to know, right? And that didn't come with me being a cute face or that didn't come with me being having this bubbly personality that everybody's like, oh my gosh, she's so nice. Like, yes, you need to have, you know, obviously be cordial to people. You need to have a, a cool personality for people to want to be around you. But at the end of the day, you need to add extreme value. Now, here's what I mean. So I'm going to give you three examples for maybe. We'll see how I'm feeling. So the first example is when I broke into the entertainment industry as a director. So I literally sought out one of the dopest directors in the world. Well, I'm going to tell you how I did it wrong first, like completely wrong. And then I'm going to tell you how I learned from my mistake and never did it again like that. So the first director, I was working at Capitol Records and they were like, hey, you know, your internship is almost over. Let's get you a mentor. And I rambled off this list of dope directors because obviously at that time, like music video directors were like at the high, right? So I'm like, yeah, I want Hype Williams. I want Dave Myers. I want all these dope people. And essentially we came down to Eric White, who was equally dope. He basically did all the beginning videos for Chris Brown. So he stapled him for all his signature look and feel in the beginning. So yo, excuse me, miss. Um, run it, like all of those videos. So essentially I started working with Eric and I remember going in there like, I'm um, this big time situation. I was still like learning and it was just not a good look, right? And so what happened was he was directing um, Run It and I was like, hey, I wanna co-direct this video. And he was just like, I'm sorry, what? Like. <laughs> He had spent all this time building his career to a certain point. And here I am, this new like 18 year old, maybe 19, 20, fresh out of college or still in college. And literally I'm telling him that I'm about to direct this video with him. And he is just like, child, sit down. So that was literally the first like cardinal mistake, right? Trying to like come in a situation and take charge of a situation knowing you aren't elevated to that level yet. And I think a lot of people do that. It's like when they're trying to come up or they're trying to establish themselves, they're like, oh, I'm gonna do this, this, and this. It's like, but have you paid your dues? And when I say that, I mean, like, have you like gotten out there? Have you gotten educated? Have, have you learned the game, right? And so that was like my cardinal mistake, number one. And I never forgot that lesson. Like Eric, to this day, I still remember that. So essentially from there, I decided, all right, I'm going to do this different. So I went and I sought out another director, Ray K, who was also like huge at that time. He was doing Lady Gaga. He had uh, the number one video on VH1 at that time, which was Poker Face and a bunch of other really, really, really established artists. And so when I came to Reggae, I came as a pure student, right? I came and I was like, yo, how do I add value? How do I help you? What do you need? I was on set and getting coffee, doing all kinds of crazy, just like, to me, like things that served him, but didn't serve me. But it, I, after that Eric experience, I learned my lesson. I'm like, whatever you need, I got you. And slowly but surely, Ray and I decided, or not decided, we started building a relationship. And essentially, that relationship led me to getting signed to Rock Hard Films, which was one of the biggest production companies in the world at that time. It was owned by Mark Classfeld, who did a lot of dope, dope, dope videos in the back in that time, still doing dope videos now, um, Jay-Z and just like huge artists. So that was like 
a catalyst for me to understand one, like humble yourself, little girl, <laughs> and two, like add value, like consistently add value. What can you do? And so I was writing rape case treatments. And that even took just getting the relationship built. A lot of people are so impatient. They get in the game and they're like, I need to go and I need to go now. Like I need to be successful. I want the glitz and the glam. I want the Lambo dreams and the big house in the hills and all that stuff, which is cool. Like we should all have a vision, but at the end of the day, you got to make sure that you're working consistently and you're patient and you're willing to do the work to get to that vision, right? And so essentially after writing a ton of treatments, I wrote so many treatments for Ray, um, his A. Marie video, his dream rocking that thing video, um, just, just so many videos he was like, hey, come work with me on set. Like, here's a camera, like, do your thing, right? And so that led us to co-directing a video for Justin Bieber and, and Sean Kingston. To this day, this video has probably a billion views on YouTube, it's insane. But like, that took so much time and effort and trust for him to get to that point of saying, yo, I got you, like, you can do this, I trust you, I believe in you, and I want you to be successful. And then eventually he was on my sets because labels were like, hey, we don't really know her yet, but like, we'll, we'll let you shoot, or we'll let her shoot if you're there, you know? So he returned the favor. So I think that's, that's so huge, and people miss that a lot, is like, come into the situation with a humble mind and just how can you add value? So that was number one. Um, a funny catalyst off of that video is I also, so Damon John is one of our, like we, I can hit him at any moment and he will like hit me back. Like we are tight, tight, right? But that happens because that same video that Justin Bieber, Sean Kingston video, he had just started Shark Tank. And I was like, who is this black man? <laughs> <laughs> so I looked him up on Facebook at the time. And mind you, I met Ray K on MySpace. So I'm a little social media guru. I'll figure that out. So I looked him up on Facebook and I was like, hey, look, I think you're really interesting. I'm interested in entrepreneurship. Still a little curious about what it actually is, but you know, how can I help? Like, how can I add value? And at that time, we were doing a lot of product placement and videos. And it was expensive. Like you wanted to get your product placed, especially for a top tier video, because those video budgets were like a half a million to a million dollars in some cases. Um, and so if you wanted to get your product placed, you had to like shovel out that bread, right? And so for Damon, I was like, hey, what's up? Like, let me help. What do you need? And he was like, look, I got all these products from Shark Tank. What can you put in some of those videos? So I ended up putting like, these little band wrist watches all up in this uh, Justin Bieber and Sean Kingston video. I know they got in post and was like, what the hell are all these watches? But yo, I mean, I did what I could to add value to him. And like, and that's another thing, like I never ask for anything when I'm established in a relationship. I just don't. Because I feel like for me, it's so imperative that you trust me and you know that I'm not in it to like, like screw you over. You know, I'm not in it. Like I, I genuinely have a good spirit. And I think that's a, a huge part of it, right? Like, you don't like, yes, you should add value, but don't add value when you come with an ulterior motive, if that makes sense. Yes, we have our goals, but it's not like a, a bait and switch, if you will. It's like, yo, I'm going to add value. And then hopefully if that value is returned, dope. If not, I learned a lot of stuff in that process, right? Um, and so that's the, the, the relationship with Damon and I. Like, we don't talk all the time. We rarely talk. I think I've seen them on Clubhouse for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> and super long but like if I hit him he will hit me back immediately and that's the type of relationships like I like to build and so moving forward from that so my next career after that I had a venture back tech company now anybody who is in the tech and entrepreneurship space knows that it's extraordinarily hard for black people to raise funding it's just a, a unconscious bias and pattern matching and all these like buzzwords that you're going to hear that those things are super true. And so for me, when I went into going through the process of building my company, I literally did not know that, right? And so I ended up working at this all girls entrepreneurship boot camp, teaching them video production and like brand and all these things. Came across one of the ladies and she was like, hey, you should check out this program, Draper University. Now I had never in my life heard of Tim Draper ever. <laughs> like, I did not know anything about his family. I didn't know, you know, anything, right? So I went and I literally said, hey, I want to do this program. It looks super interesting. I looked it up online. 
And I said, I have an idea for an app that I want to build. It's a lot of relationships out there, like a lot of relationship apps, like a Tinder and a, you know, I don't even know what was around at that time, maybe match.com, but like all these apps are out there, but like what app is keeping you in these relationships? Like where is, where is the coaching, right? And so what I did was I put together a pitch and I went to them and I said, hey, I can't necessarily afford this, but you know, I would love to come to your program. Do you guys offer scholarships? Like what other opportunities? Like how can I add value again? Like in order to, to receive any type of funding that you guys have from a scholarship standpoint. And they were like, look, why don't you crowdfund? And at that time, crowdfunding to me was a signal of begging. <laughs> like, I was like, I don't want to do that. Like, I don't want to ask a bunch of people for stuff because again, like my values are rooted in giving value. So I definitely didn't want to ask. And so what I did was I ended up saying, okay, I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it my way. Right. So I went to, I used to work in radio. That was like, a, I had a internship when I was in college at one of the largest radio stations in Los Angeles, 100 point through the beat. Still, all those people are still fam to this day, but, um, I used to work in radio. So I called one of my old producers like, Hey, you know, I'm going to try this like program. Like, would you be interested in, in, you know, donating to my crowdfunding campaign? And he was like, yo, I got you Sequoia. Because again, when I was in radio, I added extreme value at the station as well. And he was like, yo, come up to the station. He's at iHeart now. He's like, come up to the station. If you could bring somebody from Draper U, I will put you on air and blast you out to the world. And you could raise funding like that to go to the, the program. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> so again, that network, that, those relationships, like being able to call Tawala and being like, yo, what's up T? Like, I know we haven't spoken in a while, but like, this is what I'm doing. And so having those people in my corner was so important. So it turns out fast forward that we were gonna ask Jesse Draper, Tim started to do it. She had a, a conflict, a scheduling conflict, conflict. And so we ended up, you know, going back. And when I say we, I mean me, I ended up going back and talking to their, their CEO, our COO at the time. And I was like, Hey, look, Jesse can't do it. Do you guys have anybody else? And she was like, let me see if we can get Tim. Okay. I still only know at this time that Tim is literally the founder of this university and he's a venture capitalist. That's about the extent of it. Right. So I started doing my research and I was like, wait, like Tim's family, like created VC in Silicon Valley. Yo, that's a huge deal, right? And so at this time, the reason why this relationship was so important for Tim as well is he was trying to disrupt California and split it into, I want to say five or six different states. I don't remember, but he got a platform that amplified that message across the United States because uh, 640 KFI was the number one talk station in the United States, right? So essentially what happened was I was able to bring Tim up to the station and he was able to talk about six, Calif yes, six Californias, that's what it was. He was able to talk about six Californias and he was like, yo, this is so awesome. Like he was so cool. So imagine this billionaire walking up into this station that you've never met, that you've gotten to hop on a flight <laughs> to come to LA to be on this radio show. And he don't know nothing about you except that you trying to go to Draper University, right? So there's some trust in there too. Some a little bit of, of, of other people talking you up, right? You never know who's talking to who about you. And so after that situation, I ended up going through the program, going through Draper U, and Tim ended up backing my company, which was crazy because at the time, again, those numbers were statistically lower in terms of Black women. I mean, gosh, not even just Black people, Black women getting financed for, for VC. Those, those numbers were statistically low. So I ended up being a part of that that statistic in a good way right and so that was super just like mind-blowing for me because I realized hey listen it's not you just got to consistently consistently add that value and for Tim that was something that he remembered because I found out after the fact we ended up doing a tv show of startup you which is currently on Hulu it was on free it is on Freeform. Um, it was on ABC Family at the time so 
we ended up doing that TV show together. And I found out then that he was like, yeah, like I really paid attention to Sequoia and what she was doing because of the way she moved, right? Because she added a lot of value coming in here. And it wasn't like, it was literally him seeing the process and seeing how I was giving, right? And not just trying to get. And I think that's another thing, like a lot of people don't understand is like, you have to consistently be giving, like consistently, right? You never want to go to somebody and be like, hey, especially people who have made it in your mind or people who are considered successful because they don't have time. Like at the end of the day, you need to be looking at their situation and saying, okay, what do they need and how can I help them? period. The rest is irrelevant. What your needs are, are irrelevant because you're trying to get to a certain level. You're trying to, you know, grow in your career or whatever it is that you're trying to do. So you need to be asking yourself like very genuinely and authentically, what do they need and how, and it, and it feels good to help people, right? People are, are happy. People are excited and people trust and like you when you're going through that process. Whereas just imagine when you get a call, you know, and somebody's like, I need blah, 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 blah. The first thing you're like, yo, I'm not go. Because at the end of the day, your resources are being pulled in a million different places, right? And so it's, it's just making sure that you build that network ahead of time and like building that relationship ahead of time. And like those things pay off tenfold. And, and then it's, a, and it's a, an investment. It's an investment in yourself and it's an investment in what we call social capital, like you are building that social capital, right? And so I would say that was a, a relationship that was instrumental in the way, like it's the reason I'm in venture capital now. It's the, I was able to leverage that relationship to get to the current venture capital firm I'm at M13 right now. So I think it's so important that we realize these things and we're not just knocking on doors and asking for a handout or like, literally just like gimme 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 because that is like the craziest way like it's like it's I don't even know that it seems like it should work but I guess people just like rationalize it in their heads I have no idea but at the end of the day when you are in the process of getting to the next level I've had four different careers I'll have another one after this I'm sure um, when you're in the process of getting to the next level, you always need to be asking yourself, like, how can I add value? How can I fill a gap that that person doesn't already have filled? And literally, that is going to be your key to success. So stay out of them DMs if you ain't adding value. Just period, point blank, end of story. Y'all, thanks so much for listening. I will continue to make more videos and I will continue to give you guys more value because I know that that is what you're watching this for. All right, take care.